Hey everyone, this is Chelsea from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where jazz composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm here today with Australian composer, band leader, guitarist, and valve trombonist, Dr. Mace Francis. It is so great to see you, Mace. <laughs> yeah, good to see you again. So we're going to talk about a couple of projects that you have going on today, but I'd like to start with this. Uh, you're the artistic director of the Western Australia Youth Jazz Orchestra, who I had the privilege of working with while I was over there. Can you tell us more about the program? The West Australian Youth Jazz Orchestra, or WAJO, as we like to call it, um, uh, has been around for about almost 40 years. Um, uh, I, I've been artistic director since 2008, um, and started as a band member, as a guitar player in 2001, and that's where I really got a taste for big band music and uh, have been sort of addicted ever since. Um, Wajo is an independent organisation which is sort of outside of a educational sort of facility um, and offers, sort of, offers opportunities uh, for young jazz musicians to have sort of the very best big band experience they can. Uh, we have three big bands made up of musicians age 14 to 25 and every year we have an audition process uh, where we sort of audition for three new bands. Uh, the bands rehearse on Monday, or we have the Monday Night Orchestra which rehearses on Mondays, Tuesday Night Orchestra and then Wednesday Night Orchestras. And in recent years um, we've worked with lots of great guest artists like yourself, uh, Chelsea, um, Jim McNeely, uh, Darcy James Argue, Micah Bainey, Dick Oates, Linda O, uh, Migiwami Jima, uh, Ed Partika and Ed Newmeister. It's been sort of a, um, a dream few years to be able to work with all those wonderful composers and, and my heroes. And every year we put together an annual program which involves lots of performances as many guest artists as we can, tours and recordings. And it's a really special uh, organisation that um, has fostered lots of great musicians over the years, um, encouraging them to pursue music professionally alongside the jazz university we have here in Perth. And people like Linda O oh and Matt Jodrell and Troy Roberts, who, you know, are kicking butt in the US at the moment, um, have all come through Wajo. And, um, and we're really proud of that. Uh, and we also run a series of workshops throughout the year to um, sort of outside of the performance program, which uh, which helps at a high school age kids pursue music. Um, and we run a young women in jazz program, which we're really proud of to sort of help address the, sort of the gender imbalance in our uh, jazz scene here in, in WA or in Western Australia. Um, so over the 40 years, um, there's been a lot of encouragement of people to start their own large ensembles around town so for a small isolated city like Perth uh, we have a pretty good um, pretty good uh, jazz and large ensemble scene. So early this month the Perth International Jazz Festival which you direct announced its schedule and lineup and there's some really exciting shows coming up I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah we're very excited to um, have uh, have launched the Perth International Jazz Festival program, which we did, we launched it last month. Um, the The festival is a three day jazz festival. Um, next year will turn ten years old. Um, I've been the director of of this festival since two thousand and eight, after the um, untimely passing of its uh, founder Graham Wood, who who passed away in two thousand and seventeen, um, and before the you know the COVID times, we we're able to uh, bring in a lot of uh, great jazz musicians from around the world. Um, you know, having a, a strong love of uh, of big bands and and big band composers, uh, I was able to bring in um, Sarah McDonald, uh, New York composer in two thousand and eight, Chelsea uh, in two thousand and nineteen. Um, we had sort of early conversations with uh, Miho. Uh, for 2020, but, um, well, we all know what happened there. Um, we were very lucky to present a live festival to a real live audience uh, last year in November, um, and that's sort of due to our uh, very strict border closures, which has kind of kept um, 
the pandemic out of our city. Um, and we're looking forward to presenting a full three-day festival uh, November 5 to 7 uh, this year, so less than a month away. Um, it's a three-day festival um, uh, which runs over a weekend, which is based in in sort of the Perth uh in the Perth city, uh, but this year is the first year that we're expanding regionally. So we're we're taking the festival on the road or you know on on tour um, to regional towns outside of WA. So we're heading down south, um, you know, five six seven hour drive away, um, and then in following years we're going to take it up north, which is you know several days drive north, um, just to sort of spread spread the uh, the word and spread the love of jazz. Uh, this year, the the program is mostly uh, local artists um, doing sort of different projects. We're bringing some people in interstate from states like Tasmania and, and South Australia, which is sort of safer and allow us we're allowed to travel um, to those states. And we're doing a really interesting interactive performance uh, with a, a group from the Netherlands called uh, Tin Men and the Telephone, and it's a it's a group that um have developed an app which means that the audience in Perth will be able to interact with the um, the artists in real time while they perform in, in the Netherlands. So we're, we're very excited about being able to put on this festival to our audiences in just a couple of weeks. So finally, your ensemble, the Mace Francis Orchestra, has a new record coming up titled Isolation Emancipation. We're going to feature a piece titled Squint Your Eyes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, well, yeah, this this album, um, it's sort of it's, it's a variation. The ensemble is a variation of my sort of normal uh, Mace Francis Orchestra, which is a, a small big band, um, which is four saxes, three trombones, three trumpets, guitar, bass, and drums. Um, but this this ensemble um, is um, inspired by the the Marty Pache uh, bands of um, also the, in the nineteen fifties. During lockdown, I um, sort of delved into the into the scores of Art Pepper Plus Eleven. I really love those that album and sort of other albums around that time with that he did with um, Ella Fitzgerald and and Mel Torme. All the music's really swinging. The on uh, the arrangements are really um, yeah super. Oh yeah, they're they're really accessible. Um, you know, fairly safe and commercial. But there's always some really hip stuff that he puts in in um, in that. In his writing um, on those albums, so I decided to write some music in that in that style uh, and with that ensemble. So I kind of adapted the ensemble um, to a plus eleven, uh, which is three saxes, two trumpets, French horn, two trombones, piano, bass, drums, and uh, have some vocals um, on the on the album too. Um, yeah, the, the piece we're going to hear um, a, a bit from. Uh, is an original tune called Squint Your Eyes. Um, it's, I guess, the, the piece is about, um, you know, squinting your eyes, focusing on what's important, uh, ignoring all the rubbish that's going on around us. Um, I sort of, I do that to kind of focus better on things and I squint my eyes. I mean, that's probably an eyesight issue that I'll need to deal with eventually. But, um, you know, just to focus on what's important. Uh, the tune was composed using... Um, a Jim McNeely technique, which I'm sure a lot of you know about. Um, I think it's like non-functional harmony sort of technique where you write a um, uh, a melodic contour and then um, add some sort of non-functional chords to it. Whenever I do this exercise, I like to make it odd bar lengths just to break free from the four bar and double bar line constraints. So in, in the case of this tune, it's 18 bars long and the phrases end up being sort of three bars, four bars, three bars, four bars, four bars, uh, with the ends of each phrase becoming the start of the new phrase and uh, sort of accentuated this with the lyrics of the tune, uh, which I wrote with the, the vocalist Lucy Ifler. So with the, the end of the sentence, the word that ends the sentence starts the new line. Uh, the overall form of of the of this ballad is is it's basically the melody goes through three times um, each each time differently. Uh, the first time is you know the vocal melody with accompaniment, simple and then building in intensity. 
the second time through the melody is used as a sort of background material behind the um the trumpet and piano solo and then the third time we modulate um, and there's a lot more activity behind the um the melody and then it thins out and sort of ends the way uh it began so uh yeah this is we're going to just listen to the the third time through the melody um so this is just sort of towards the end of end of the tune much for joining us today uh to learn more about mace his music and the australian jazz scene we have put a little graphic below with all of the links that you need to check out mace do you have any last words for us thanks for having me and i and i love what you do thanks for watching today be sure to like share and subscribe drop any questions comments or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below to watch our full-length events and join in live Q&As with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.